All right, now we've got the T support there. We're gonna mount the T. Olaf is helping by laying as close to us as possible and on top of some of the tools. So that's good. Good boy, good boy. Those tools aren't going anywhere. Me? Oh, I'm Me? a helper. I'm a big helper. Okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you big baby dog. <laughs> Okay, there's what the chimney coming through the wall looks like. And I just took this part of the thimble kit that goes inside and cut it down to fit better because it doesn't need to be as deep as it was for a normal wall. Hey, we did it. We got the stove in place. We used some pieces of slate to shim up the legs to get it to the right height because we wanted we wanted that horizontal run to have a little bit of an upward movement, but um but I overdid it. So we needed to lift the stove up on some on some little pieces of slate. But that'll work. So, I've still got to get outside and build the chimney all the way up but this was a huge relief big thank you to Russ for helping us get this there because that thing is a beast 400 pounds we were able to take the lid off to help with that weight to move it but that was a lot of work stove installers must be really strong or have some good equipment or both
feliz. scarier than the others. Yeah. And that wasn't the last I one. The, I don't, yeah, I don't. Okay, we've got to extend the ladder two more feet, get it up there and carry one last piece of chimney pipe with the cap on it. At this point, I wish I had looked more into the required chimney height for a stove and got one that required, you know, 12 feet or less of chimney height, but I think we'll be really happy we installed it right and got a nice stove. But right now I am a little nervous about climbing this ladder one last time because it's really awkward with a big three foot chimney pipe. Another thing I did, I just thought long lengths of pipe would be good to just handle fewer of them, but I could see if you're gonna be installing chimney pipe on a ladder, two foot sections would be so much easier to carry up and get in place. Here we go. Thank you. 
Good job. Huh? You just pass the ratchet strap with your right foot. Good. Ratchet strap is the next rung down. There you go. You just passed it with your left. Oh, baby. Good one, Aria. Okay, I've been plugging away through the day off and on. Gotta be patient. What I've learned is don't be afraid to take part of the stack apart again when you feel it wobbly and redo it with different rocks. 
Really trying to make sure as I go up that the rocks kind of lock together and if I give them a wiggle they don't just want to topple over. So it's going pretty well. Now I've got to try to get over that stove pipe without touching it and kind of finish up where I'll cover the stove board all the way up and see how it goes. Here's the finished product for our wood stove and hearth project. We're really pleased with it. Mm -hmm. um, we got it done before baby arrived, which is less than <laughs> two weeks out, so we can keep the yurt really warm. If we burn the fire hot, we can make the yurt too warm. So we're yep. finding the right balance for how much wood to put in the fire and what times of day to burn. 
So that's been really good. Mm -hmm. The a little bit about the stone and why we went with loose stone. Uh, one really important point is if we had mortared this all together, we couldn't just simply take it apart if there was a problem. And with a yurt, which could be a structure that you need to make changes to or take apart even at some point in the future, having a big mortared wall here doesn't make a lot of sense. So mm -hmm. keeping it loose. I mean, we found a we found a leak here that being able to take it apart really helped fix that. Yeah. And secondly, it, it would be it would probably be too effective of a big thermal mass if it was all mortared together because you know the, the hottest point is the stones here can get hot to the touch, but even if we've been burning for a long time, these stones further away never get more than warm. And at some point over here on the edges the stones are past the protective hearth uh, backer board, so we wouldn't want those to be too hot. So it really kind of, it works as a thermal mass, but not, not as effectively as if it was all one big block mortared together. So we kind of, we planned our living room layout based on the wood stove being the center of it. So we're really happy that it, it looks nice and it functions well and all. Mm -hmm. Take you back a little bit so you can see. We've got couch and chair framed around the stove, computer desk in the back, and then our dining table here working really well. And we've also got a ceiling fan helping us push the hot air down and keep keep circulating the air. Mm -hmm. So that's a look at the finished product in here, and I'll take you outside to get a closer look at the frame and chimney. Here's a look at the finished frame. We're so happy with how solid it turned out. You know, these two 4x4s are concreted into the ground. And then what we did here is this, this 2x4 is an addition I sent. We, we followed the Pacific Yurts foundation plan which creates a series of lines where you put your 4x6s and this, this has a mirrored post across there about 8 feet away that's under a 4x6 and so what we did is we, we put a 2x4 here connecting them which gave us something to attach to with this sex brace and then for this one I actually attached it straight underneath to the 4x6 itself underneath here and the, the net result is that it's, this whole area is really locked together and strong. So, very pleased with how that, that went. As far as the T and the, the leak that I mentioned earlier, what turned out to be happening, and I didn't know until we saw the leak, was that at the connection point where this T connects to the piece of stove pipe uh, through there, there is a seam here and when it rained, a little bit of water could drop down into that seam, into this pipe. And again, this pipe, the way triple wall pipe work is there's, a, there's an inner pipe and an outer pipe and then insulation in between. Water was getting inside that outer pipe, making it its way down the thimble and then finding an open point inside the yurt and dripping a little bit of water in. So we came back and we applied sealant all along this seam. And I'm not a, a professional at caulking and sealing, so it looks like a bit of an ugly mess back here where I've got all this stuff. But we function over form out here. We need to keep this watertight. So the, we're keeping the water out now, but I've made a bit of a mess around this area. But that's all right. The chimney drafts really well, and I understand now why stoves call for tall clearances it's about creating good draft if you if you go too short on your chimney you won't have a good draw and so we're really happy even though it was scary when we did it we're really happy we did that full 15 foot maybe a little more than 15 foot in height and when a, when there's a good hot fire our stove is super efficient and you can't even see smoke coming out of there the the same fire you just saw from the inside is burning right now and I can't see anything really coming out of it. So that wraps up this wood stove video for our yurt. 
Hope you enjoyed it and if you happen to be planning to do a project like this I hope it was helpful. We watched a few videos. The main one that was really helpful that I watched was a channel called Through Our Eyes and they did a, a very similar project and that's where I got inspiration for the, the basic setup for this frame and I'd recommend watching their video too if you're uh, planning a build. Um, as far as lessons learned, things we do the same, things we do different. Um, number one with a lot of projects I do is more precise planning would have been better. You know, if we wouldn't need this piece of board here if I had planned exactly accurate uh, spacing from the yurt to here. Um, little things like I, I got a few pieces of this pipe that's stainless and a few that aren't. I didn't even realize I, I bought it from two different sources because I could only get three pieces from one and two from another and they didn't match. So that was a little lesson learned. I'm really happy with the stove we bought. The Yodel is really great and I'm really happy with it. It's a catalytic stove which can burn more efficiently but some people might prefer the old old-fashioned non-catalytic stoves. That's fine either way. I'm really pleased with how our layout turned out. The the inside of our yurt, when you when you get a yurt and you choose the placement of your doors and stuff, you use kind of clock language. Like we've got our front door at six o'clock, our utility room door at nine o'clock, our bed and bedroom window are at twelve o'clock, and our wood stove comes out at exactly three o'clock. And what that meant was that we were able to interact really well with the foundation. It it, it turned out to be just right to work orthogonally with those four by six beams to our posts allowed us to tie into it in this way and make it really strong so I'm really pleased with that. We'll just see how this wood stove performs over the years. We've, we've been running it for over a month and we're really pleased with it but, um, but there could always be little things that come up that we have to deal with so we'll share if anything significant comes along. So I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found that helpful and let us know if, uh, if you're doing a project like this. It's always really fun to hear from that this actually helps somebody and we're not just broadcasting out into the void for no reason. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.